The Rehoboth Art League boasts a rich history of art, preservation, and community, creating a welcoming and inclusive space for creative individuals all across Sussex County. The League has been a staple in Rehoboth Beach since its inception in 1938, providing residents and visitors alike the opportunity to engage critically with all types of art and culture. And while it may be the buildings on the Art League's campus or the unique artworks in the galleries that one remembers, it's truly the people behind the scenes, the dedicated members and the fine artists and crafters that have made the Rehoboth Art League's legacy so vibrant. One of those people was Amy Anderson Sloan, an original member of the Art League and notable artist in the League's history. In this short film, we'll journey through Amy's background the creation of her famous Faces of Many Nations pottery masks, and her influence on the legacy of the Rehoboth Art League, hearing directly from Amy herself, as well as from former students and colleagues who knew Amy best. Emily Amy Anderson Sloan was born on February 23rd, 1919 to her father, James Anderson, and her mother, Blanche Brown Anderson, in Wilmington, Delaware. Her maternal aunt was famous Delaware painter and pioneer of the Rehoboth Art League, Ethel P.B. Leach. Amy grew up in Dover, Delaware, and was the second to youngest of seven children. Every summer, the family would vacation at their cottage in Rehoboth. In an audio recording from 2012, in which Gary Grunder and John Newsom were compiling an oral history of the Rehoboth Art League, Amy recalled when Henlopen Acres was just a barren and sandy area, crediting RAL founder Louise Corcoran for bringing botanical beauty to Henlopen Acres and creating the lush gardens that exist today. This had been a very sandy farm. I mean, it was just an unproductive kind of an old farm with the old house there. They added on to the old house. There, there are photographs there that you can see what it looked like. And... Um, and then Mrs. Corkin loved her garden, and she loved plants, so she brought in a lot of exotic um, trees and things like that, which she encouraged. After the stock market crash in 1929, James Anderson sold the family's cottage and moved them all abroad in June of 1931, in hopes of saving money and getting medical treatment for himself. At age 12, Amy lived in Grenoble, France, and attended public school there. When the Andersons returned to their native Dover, Amy suffered some unthinkable losses within her family, including her father, her sister Anne, and her mother. This was a devastating time for Amy, as the loss of both parents would have a profound impact on her. Amy's Aunt Ethel became a prominent person in her life after those tragic losses. Amy recalled her aunt being very encouraging of her art making. After Amy made a face out of clay and laid it in the sun to dry, Ethel put it up on the mantle, encouraging her talent. In June of 1938, Amy, along with over 200 other people, assembled for the dedication ceremony and founding of the Rehoboth Art League. sisters and I were there at the event and she says the day before she said all the children here for supper gave the girls their presents passcodes and we had a jolly time the opening of the art league at Henlopen Acres Thornton Oakley and Orville Peets spoke Emily Rose and Blanche dressed in Civil War costumes so I was there at the founding. After attending high school, Amy went to college in New York City and then transferred to the University of North Carolina. She graduated with a degree in history in 1942. Later, she returned to Delaware, where she rekindled a connection with Samuel Sloan, whom she married in 1944. Together, they lived on Pinewater Farm and raised chickens, beef, cattle, and pig. The couple had three children, Sarah, Sam Jr., and Henry. Emmy was exposed to painting and drawing through her aunt and the Art League. However, she was more interested in the kiln found at her neighbor's house. 
Amy took her first pottery course at the Rehoboth Art League with Dorothy Lewis, wife of acclaimed local artist Jack Lewis, and the production of her ceramic masks began around 1975. Amy was always curious about different people in the world, which is why she studied history at college and maintained an interest in anthropology. She found inspiration for her masks through many sources, collecting books from secondhand shops, National Geographic magazines, and other anthropology publications. She would cut out pictures of various people's faces, making a collection of clippings that featured the faces of people from South America, Bali, Tibet, and other South Asian countries. And because of the seven steps difficult, it's trying to learn how to use the wheel. I just said, oh, I can't do this, so I have to do something else. So uh, I started making masks, making faces, because I figured I, I wanted to do sculpture, but I didn't know where I would put a piece of sculpture. Well, as it is, if I just had a face, I could hang that on the wall. It was easier to mount. Hand building masks of faces was a way to combine her passions for history, art, and culture. A technique Amy used to create her famous masks was wadding up a piece of newspaper into a flattish oval and securing it with masking tape, then using the form to drape a thick roll of clay on the surface. She would then pick up the clay and work both from the top surface and the underside, forming the features. Eyes and teeth were cut out and adhered from the underside. Headdresses, hair, and other ornaments were added separately. In 2017, the Rehoboth Art League staged a retrospective of her work, and Amy wrote an accompanying book titled Faces of Many Nations, which was published in 2008. At the end of her life, Amy spent her days teaching pottery at the Academy of Lifelong Learning and the Rehoboth Art League. She loved being a mentor to budding potters. I think that she uh, got a lot of people into doing pottery. More than, uh, probably more than anybody else here. She taught a lot of classes and people got interested and uh, proceeded on with their art. There was a, a school teacher mentality in her that stuck with her. In her retirement, she did pottery. And I think she started in the pottery studio um, probably about my age. And that's why she had the appreciation for it because she came in from um, working very hard all her life, first as a farm wife and a mother, and then as a school teacher. And when she came into the studio, she realized there was a whole new world open to her. And uh, she really taught me the, the love of it. And that's what always is with me. And I, for this, till this day, I still have that love of pottery and, and working with it. In 2014, to honor her work and impact on the Art League, the Chambers Pottery Studios Hand Building Room was dedicated as the Amelie Anderson Sloan Hand Building Studio. Amy was surprised and delighted by the honor. In 2019, Amy celebrated her 100th birthday in the Corcoran Gallery at the Rehoboth Art League, surrounded by her family and colleagues. She passed away on December 31st, 2020, at the age of 101. To honor her, an award of excellence in hand building was established in her name. Amy joins her Aunt Ethel in taking another seat of historical prominence here at the Rehoboth Art League, having devoted her time and energy to the artistic growth of our organization. Her legacy to me is that she, she spread the love of pottery and um, she just embodied um, of everything that you would want in a friend and a mentor. I think that she's just uh, epitomizes the person that uses the, uh, the instructors and the people that use the art league in that they want to pass on the information they have and their skill set to other people so that they can enjoy making art too.